Welcome to North Methodist Church's 3rd of May with Reverend Mary Sachikonye. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord, let us wake up every morning and be thankful for the wonderful life that you have given us. Help us to see the good in things. Help us to be happy with who we are 
and the life we are living. Lead us down the path you have set for us. Guide us in the way that we get to show the world our gifts. We put all in your hands, Jesus. Use us as your vessel. We thank you for our health, love, abilities, family and friends, and most of all this life. We will do great things in your name. Amen. Acts chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 42, reading from the New International Version. The Fellowship of Believers. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. It's from the parable of the shepherd. Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who goes in through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hears his voice as he calls for his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow someone else. Instead, they will run away from such a person because they do not know his voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he meant. So Jesus said again, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All others who come before me, who came before me, are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever comes in by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. I read from John chapter 10, verse 1 to 10, the parable of the shepherd. I learnt from the story that Jesus is the good shepherd and we are the sheep. We only listen to the voice of Jesus and not the voice of the evil Satan. If we listen to the voice of Jesus, we will be rewarded and saved. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Chimuka. And thank you, Ryan. Chimuka is saying Mary has a little lamb. It's all a reflection on sheep. And Ryan is telling us what it is to have a good shepherd. 
this is all reflecting on the text that we read, we heard from John chapter 10, 1 to 10, which is telling us that Jesus is a good shepherd. I wonder why Jesus is saying, I'm not preaching. Today we have Rosemary preaching for us. I'm just reflecting why Jesus chose sheep, not some other animal like goat, maybe lion. Maybe leopard, maybe cattle. Which are much stronger and smarter. I've heard people saying sheep are vulnerable for prey to other animals. And they are not as smart as the other animals that I've mentioned. Let's have a look at this video, a short video about the nature of sheep. <laughs> One more time. I read an article which said sheep have got a very impressive memory and recognition skills. It was evident in that, uh, in that video that the sheep heard the farmer's voice and it said sheep have got oneness and always try to defend one another. And Jesus compared us to sheep. As I said, I'm not preaching today. Over to you, Rosemary, to give us the word of the day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Rosemary Tusting. I, with Jeremy, my husband, am a member at Trinity Ecumenical Church in Thorpe Marriott. I'm a retired United Reformed Church minister. No one is going to be more surprised than I am if I appear on the screen in front of you this morning as a result of a conversation with Reverend Mary in which uh, Jeremy and I wanted to express our appreciation to you all for the acts of worship we've had in past weeks. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, the conversation led to this moment and here I am. Maybe in these lockdown days you've watched some of the amazing wildlife programmes on offer now. So much is known about animal behaviour now, and especially the ability of animals and birds to recognise their own. If you've watched a, a host of, of birds flying across the shoreline, their beaks full of fish, with a chick screeching below, you'll be amazed as those adult birds fly in and manage to home in on their chick amidst all the others. 
it's quite wonderful to watch how they recognize their own. Animals will recognize the human voice, especially you'll know if you have a dog. The dog will, of course, recognize your name amongst those of others. So it is with sheep. Still today in the Middle East, a shepherd will go into a crowded sheepfold and call out his own sheep one by one, naming them. They will recognise his voice and come to him. As our gospel story begins, Jesus is speaking to those near him about sheep and shepherds. We may picture sheep uh, peacefully grazing on an English or a Welsh hillside. But for Jesus and those listening, they'd be thinking of sheep in more rocky terrain, places where sheep with a faithful shepherd could be safely guarded, but also where bandits and thieves could hide and lie in wait. Just think of the Good Samaritan. But as Jesus talks, it becomes clear that the people listening are not understanding what he is talking about. Verse 6 says, Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand. So in the rest of today's meeting, and then up to verse 30, we find Jesus explaining what he means. In our Bibles, this story is marked as chapter 10, but John didn't write in chapters. So to help us understand today's passage, we need to remember what's just been happening. Jesus has walked through Jerusalem. On his way, he saw a blind man and restored his sight. Jerusalem is buzzing with the news. Who was this Jesus? Is he from God or not? Is he a prophet? Is he even the Messiah? The religious leaders, the Pharisees, however, were not amused. It was the Sabbath. Who did this upstart rabbi think he was, breaking the no-work rule himself and encouraging that blind man to do the same? They would have thrown Jesus out of the synagogue, but couldn't find him. So they found and questioned the healed man. But he protested, All Jesus did was give me back my sight. If that's not from God, then I don't know what is. The leaders didn't believe his story, accused him of sinfulness, and threw him out of the synagogue, making him an outcast. Jesus then went out of his way to tell the man um, that one door still remained open. Do you believe in the Son of Man? he asked. He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. The Pharisees, the religious leaders in Israel, should have been faithful shepherds over God's flock, but they had failed. The story of the blind man illustrates this. Not once did they rejoice over the, over the wonderful fact that the man, blind from birth, could now see. They were more concerned that Jesus had violated their legalistic Sabbath rules. The true shepherd, Jesus explains, calls his own by name and leads them out. When he's brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. The sheep can't spend their whole lives in the sheepfold, no matter how safe the enclosure may be. There's no food in the fold, after all. The sheep may be comfortable and safe, but they must follow the shepherd out of the fold in order to live more fully. So what is Jesus the door of the gate to? He goes on to explain he is the door to abundant life the door through which all may become fully aware who they are meant to be. 
He's not talking about sheep anymore, is he? He's talking about us. The meaning of this parable of Jesus is clearer when we start to think of Jesus himself as being the door. I am the door, he says. I am the gate. He isn't only the door into the sheepfold, he's also the door out. He is the door into the sheepfold where he will find communities of love, where we will find communities of love, communities of justice and of peace. He is, at the same time, the door by which we go into green pastures and experience the fullness of life in all its abundance. We're not just led out as aimless sheep. We've been called by name to follow the one whose voice we have recognised, to go and do as he has done. And that's just what happens in the verses we read from Acts. Jesus, uh, Peter and the other apostles have been called by Jesus through the Holy Spirit and been empowered to go about his work, to be involved in doing things they had never dreamt of. All those new Christians, as they came to be called, who'd heard the voice of Jesus, the leader they could trust, were drawn together. And day by day, Peter baptised many of them, Jews and Gentiles alike, no distinction of colour, creed or race. Just the recognition that they had heard their name called by Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Even though Peter, an observant Jew like Jesus, obeying the dietary laws and other observances of his people, he could not refuse baptism for a single moment. Without instructing the Gentiles in the Jewish law, they were welcomed into the fam new family of the Christian community. On Monday morning, early, I heard on the radio, on a programme called Outlook, suddenly the word gatekeeper. And I discovered uh, they were interviewing someone called Washje Nusebe, the Muslim doorkeeper of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. His family apparently have, for generations since the 7th century, father to son, opened up the door of the most holy uh, site in Christendom, the place where it is believed Jesus was crucified and buried. Apparently, the key was handed to uh, Wasea's family uh, because the three Christian denominations who share the building could not decide who should be given the responsibility to open the door. So across those hundreds and hundreds of years, that family has faithfully got up at four o'clock in the morning and opened up, um, climbed a ladder, opened the door, hidden the ladder, whatever they have to do, uh, into this huge, rather... Um, strange building really but for only the second time in all those years in February they had to close the Church of the Holy Sepulchre because of the coronavirus not since the Black Death had that happened it's quite incredible that uh, a man of another faith a family of another faith were entrusted with opening the uh, most holy building of these Christians who couldn't agree to open the door. But people of all faiths and none come in and out through that door. And um, Wasea said um, how the busiest time of year, the Easter, was so quiet this year but it was very sad to him not to welcome so many people there. The promise of full life, the promise of full life and abundant living to all, 
all are encouraged and welcomed in through the door, the gate of Jesus. The, with the promise of full life, life to overflowing, which is as relevant for us today as it was then. And maybe even more so during these uncertain days of isolation. We are faced very starkly with the things that really matter. Our relationships with one another. The presence of those we love, our friends and family, and our health. We may, may not be able to meet in worship, but we can resolve to follow more clearly, more closely, the one who calls us by name to follow in his footsteps, however that may be. A few final words from Ken Taylor, a Methodist minister from a meditation he's written on this passage. The Good Shepherd knows your name and knows your need, does not confuse you with any other and loves you, enough to lay his life down for you. He will not keep you safe from every ill. His people may suffer disease like any other, but he will deliver you from fear and despair from all he battled with in that garden, from doubt and disillusion, sin and death. He will keep you safe. He expects us to follow when he calls. The shepherd becomes the lamb that was slain and the sheep are called to be shepherds. You must do as I have done for you. Seek the lost. Defend those in danger. Feed the hungry with the bread of life. The Good Shepherd is leading us all to a better pasture than we have known. Amen. prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Amongst uncertainty about our futures, we look to you, Lord God. Amongst doubt and fear, 
and a desire to respond to your call, we look to you, Lord God. Perhaps we know what we must do. Perhaps our vocation is clear before us. Perhaps we do not yet know. Perhaps we have never been more confused about what we are supposed to do. In this time, on this Vocation Sunday, show us how we can respond to a world in need. We spend a moment now in quiet, bringing before you the situations on our hearts and minds which we wish to pray for. In the quiet, hear our prayers, Lord Jesus. We pray for all those affected by COVID-19 and all involved in responding to that virus, all those on the front line. By your grace, Lord Jesus, come amongst us. Comforter and healer God, we pray for all who have been recently bereaved. By your grace, comfort those of us who weep. May we be an answer to prayer today in some mysterious way. We think of our elderly and disabled in care homes and those looking after them. Lord, in such settings, it is really difficult to separate those who may be infected. We hear of the increasing numbers of deaths in homes where, again, loved ones have not been able to be with them at the end. We ask for strength and mental well-being for all care and nursing staff in these situations. Lord, we pray for your church, which feels so fragmented at this time. Help us to stay strong in our faith and remind us to keep in touch with those members who don't have the luxury of modern technology. They must feel so alienated at this time, not having that fellowship and support that comes with church. We think of our ministers who are holding our churches together in these strange times. Father, we thank you that our Prime Minister has recovered from COVID-19 and is now able to be in control of government again. We ask for wisdom in our ministers to make the right decisions regarding the lessening of the lockdown, taking advice from professionals, engaging how other countries are recovering. By your grace, Lord Jesus, help us all through these frightening times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will bring our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Peace, peace with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you.
Thank you for watching. Uh, please do subscribe, like, or share our worship channel. God bless you as you do.